Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing good. In this video, we will discuss the anatomy of the occipital bone. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Starting with the general information about the bone. The occipital bone is trapezoid in shape. It forms the posterior and inferior walls of the brain case. Let's have a look. So this is the sagittal cross section and the superior view of the cranium. And this bone shaded in orange is the occipital bone. The bone can be divided into four parts. The basilar part, two lateral parts and the squamous part. All these parts contribute to form the foramen magnum. The foramen magnum functions as a passage of the central nervous system through the skull connecting the brain with the spinal cord. Let's have a look. So this is the anterior view of the bone. The part shaded in green is the basilar part. In red are the two lateral parts, also known as the condylar parts. And this part shaded in yellow is the squamous part. As you can see, all of these parts contribute to form this foramen magnum. We will discuss each of these parts separately and see what all anatomical features they possess. Starting with the basilar part. The basilar part has superior and inferior surface. The inferior surface is a component of the superior pharyngeal wall and it bears the pharyngeal tubercle. The groove for the inferior petrosal sinus is seen on the lateral edges of the basilar part. The basilar part fuses with the sphenoid bone by the age of 18. The superior surfaces of the basilar part and the body of the sphenoid bone form the clivus. Let's have a look. This is the superior and the inferior view of the bone. This is the superior surface of the basilar part. And here is the inferior surface of the basilar part. We discussed here that the inferior surface is a component of the superior pharyngeal wall and it bears the pharyngeal tubercle. So this is the pharyngeal tubercle. This is the cross-sectional view and the area marked has the pharyngeal tubercle. So this is the anterior and the superior view of the bone. And as we discussed here that the groove for the inferior petrosal sinus is seen on the lateral edges of the basilar part. So these markings depict the groove for the inferior petrosal sinus. This again is the anterior view of the bone. And this is the clivus. This is how the superior surfaces of the basilar part and the body of the sphenoid bone form the clivus. With this we complete the basilar part and move on to the next part which is the lateral or the condylar part. The inferior surface of the lateral part bears the occipital condyle for articulation with the atlas. The base of the occipital condyle is pierced by the hypoglossal canal. Condylar fossa is present behind the occipital condyle. Sometimes it is penetrated by the condylar canal. The jugular process projects laterally to the condyle. This process limits the jugular notch posteriorly. The jugular notch of the occipital bone and the jugular notch of the temporal bone form the jugular foramen. The groove for the sigmoid sinus lies on the superior surface of the lateral part. Let's have a look. This is the inferior view of the bone. And this is the occipital condyle which articulates with the atlas. The base of this occipital condyle is pierced by this hypoglossal canal. This is the condylar fossa present behind the occipital condyle and it is penetrated by this condylar canal. We discussed here that the jugular process projects laterally to the condyle and limits the jugular notch posteriorly. So this is the jugular process projecting laterally to the condyle. And this is the jugular notch. This is the superior view. And the bone shaded in orange is the occipital bone. We discussed that the jugular notch of the occipital bone and the jugular notch of the temporal bone form the jugular foramen. So this bone shaded in the red is the temporal bone. And the jugular notch of this bone along with the jugular notch of the occipital bone forms this jugular foramen. Lastly, this is the groove for the sigmoid sinus which lies on the superior surface of the lateral part. With this we complete the condylar part and move on to the last part which is the squamous part. It has a convex external and a concave internal surface. 
Features of the external surface include The external occipital protuberance is in the center of the external surface. The external occipital crest extends from the occipital protuberance on the midline to the posterior border of the foramen magnum. The superior nuchal line passes laterally from the protuberance on each side. And the inferior nuchal line passes laterally from the middle of the external occipital crest on each side. Features of the internal surface include The internal surface of the squamous part is marked by the grooves produced by the dural venous sinuses. The grooves are arranged like a cross and are known as the cruciform eminence. At the center of the cross is the internal occipital protuberance. The internal occipital crest extends from the internal protuberance on the midline to the posterior border of the foramen magnum. The groove for the transverse sinus passes laterally from the internal protuberance on each side. The groove for the superior sagittal sinus passes upwards from the internal protuberance. Let's have a look at the external features first. So this is the external surface of the bone. This is the occipital protuberance which is located at the center of this external surface. This is the external occipital crest which extends from the occipital protuberance on the midline to the posterior border of the foramen magnum. This is the superior nuchal line which passes laterally from the protuberance on each side. And this is the inferior nuchal line which passes laterally from the middle of the external occipital crest on each side. Now let's have a look at the features of the internal surface. This is the internal surface of the bone. And these areas outlined in black are the grooves produced by the dural venous sinuses. As you can see the grooves are arranged like a cross and are known as the cruciform eminence. At the center of the cross is the internal occipital protuberance. This is the internal occipital crest that extends from the internal protuberance on the midline to the posterior border of the foramen magnum. This is the groove for the transverse sinus. And this is the groove for the superior sagittal sinus. With this we complete the anatomy of the occipital bone. So that is it for this video guys, don't forget to subscribe the channel and follow us on Instagram, links in the description.